Managing traffic in a city like Delhi is one of the toughest job one can have in Delhi because like our infrastructure is not and I repeat not ultimately is not and will not be able to meet the, your transport needs so like uh, everywhere you have been uh, getting problems Being the Indian capital, Delhi has over the years become a metropolitan magnet with people migrating from across the country in search of a better life. But the city's civic infrastructure has not kept pace and this sustained influx is now weighing heavily on the city's resources. Transportation has been one of the worst affected. Here's a look at the problem as it stands today. Delhi has 6.5 million vehicles, more vehicles than anywhere else in the country. In the last four decades, one vehicle was bought in the city every three minutes. That number has doubled in the last decade, with two vehicles being bought every three minutes now. To accommodate this rapid increase, authorities have expanded the city's road network. In the last four decades since 1970, the road network in Delhi grew by four times. But the problem is, during the same period, the number of vehicles grew by 21 times. And to make matters worse, the road network is today growing at a rate slower than ever before, from up to 70% four decades back to just 9% now. The effect is showing on the roads. Experts say vehicles must do at least 40 km per hour to avoid congestion. But on Delhi's arterial roads, vehicles average just about 22 km per hour. The personal and economic costs of congestion are also heavy. An average commuter in Delhi wastes up to two and a half hours every day travelling between home and office. That adds up to 4.2 crore man-hours lost in transit every month. To understand more about the problem, I have come to meet Anumita Roy Chaudhary, Executive Director of the Centre for Science and Environment, an advocacy group that also works with the government on managing the city's traffic problems. She tells me in the absence of a well-developed public transport network and with growing incomes and easy loans, people are buying more personal vehicles. And that, she says, creates problems. If you look at the US and European cities today where you have car ownership to the range of about 600 to 800 cars per thousand people, in Delhi today we are talking about roughly between 100 to 115 cars per 1,000 people. If you look at all India bases, that is just 10 cars per thousand people. Even with such low ratio, our cities and our roads are clogged. And imagine what will happen if you try to replicate the ratio that you see in US cities to a billion population, I mean, you will just completely destroy the cities and with that the world. The government has so far done little to discourage people from buying personal vehicles. But over the last decade, the government has given a massive push towards making public transport more popular. Its flagship project is the Delhi Metro the Indian capital's first intracity rail network, with its air-conditioned modern trains, swanky stations, and above all, efficient performance and congestion-free travel, Delhi Metro today transports nearly 1.8 million travellers every day. The public bus system too has been revamped with introduction of modern air-conditioned buses. Authorities have also created new transport systems that prioritise public transport. A new corridor has been created with one lane reserved exclusively for buses, hoping car users will switch over if buses travel faster. 17 more such corridors are in the pipeline. Authorities are also experimenting with modern systems, like new corridors where a lane is reserved for non-motorized vehicles like cycle rickshaws, hoping that people would be encouraged to shun cars for short distance travel if such transport options are made lucrative. But those efforts are proving to be insufficient. Delhi's traffic police chief Satendra Garg tells me it's becoming more of a chicken and egg problem. At every major city, the public transport uh, takes major share. Here in Delhi, like what is happening, of course, like Metro has come in a big way. But uh, overall, if you see the share of public transportation, it is not what it should be. As a consequence, the need for private uh, vehicles is going up. Whatever you add to infrastructure is not sufficient to the ever-increasing number of vehicles.
To get a first-hand account of how transportation problems affect daily life, I met Harsh Takru, a management graduate working with a global FMCG company. He lives in a satellite town south of Delhi and spends nearly two and a half hours on the road every day for a commute that shouldn't take him more than an hour and a half. Harsh lives with his wife but says his family life has been reduced to only weekends. Uh, you do feel very stressed or um, uh, quite tense. It, it impacts your productivity A because um, obviously when you're at a higher level of stress, uh, you're less well rested, um, your, your work output can be affected. Even if you manage to get the work output, it, um, it takes a toll on you because uh, it's not possible that you're giving in extra hours, you're working at a higher level of stress, you're also spending so much time on the road and still, uh, you know, it doesn't impact you. With the per capita earning in Delhi increasing year after year, more and more people are buying personal vehicles. So I asked this final question to the traffic experts. What will it take to solve Delhi's growing traffic problem? See, the solution is very simple. Like, in a way it's simple, but in a way it's complex because maybe that is not coming. So the so solution is simple, that you have to increase the public transport. And you have to drastically reduce private vehicles. And unfortunately, none of them is coming.